everyone. We have our daily question yesterday. R right. Yeah, we do. But before we get into that, I did want to ask, did you have anything on that presser uh, this morning? With the CNMI governor? Well, that's right. Uh, yeah, we, we talked all about a lot of things. So it's held every day, uh, every Friday at the wonderful hour of 8 in the morning. <laughs> Lisa's uh, doing weekly press and conferences. And it's, uh, it's weekly, <laughs> yeah. right. No, wow. so they are uh, they are increasing that access. It used to be daily at the... Maybe that'll the, work. The, uh, See that, Governor Lou? Program. Governor Lou, <laughs> Governor Ralph is doing weekly press conferences in the CNMI every week. He comes and he, he does a press conference weekly. That's all. Go on, as you were. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we asked him about some uh, complaints we've been getting about uh, tourists getting better treatment and quarantine than, than, uh, than uh, residents do. And, you know, the travel bubble that was developed with uh, South Korea is uh, definitely something that uh, they're prioritizing in terms of the economy. And he apologized to the residents who, you know, say that there's a, there's a bit of an issue. But as we've reported, most people understand why it needs to be done. Uh, we also asked him about the uh, recent testimony of the utilities uh, commissioner about uh, the his water and power bill in, in, in the in the thousands that uh, we we're also going to share more on prime time and weekend uh, with, with all of our folks and also talking with the uh, uh, members of the COVID-19 task force the hospital CEO Esther Munia and the chair Warren Villa Gomez getting an update uh, they updated their travel protocol if you're vaccinated uh, it remains the same but if you're unvaccinated and you don't have a test you quarantine for 10 to 14 days if Whoa. you enter the CNMI. And you pay, do you pay for it? Uh, there, there is that option. <laughs> yes. And so uh, that's a bit of the uh, of regional news uh, on, on our Friday, yeah. and uh, we'll have more on that in the newscast. All right. And now on to the daily question. Yes. So yesterday, you know, I think just quite a few, you know, just a few people saw <laughs> and responded. Yeah, there, a couple of people? Uh, yeah. Well, so we asked yesterday, of course, with the Nestor Lacanto's report of, uh, of uh, uh, San Nicolas's uh, remarks at the chamber meeting, who would you support as the next governor and delegate San Nicolas? Governor Leon Guerrero, neither. We also uh, encourage people to write in their candidates. Uh, kind of sifting through uh, the several dozens of comments, but wanted to share this snapshot of the poll that we posted. So we asked across all of our platforms and on our Instagram story, we had a poll. And on that poll, we had options. Uh, 142 people voted for Delegate St. Nicholas. Uh, 76 voted for the current governor, Leon Guerrero. Uh, 192 said neither, uh, and then about 30 just chose the other option to DM us. And so we got lots of responses. I think whoa, 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 hold on, bro, because I think we need a little more fanfare with those results. So you're saying that Delegate St. Nicholas beat Governor Lou? On our Instagram poll. Two to one? Was it two to one? Seems, yeah, seems, wow. seems right about that. Really? Yep. Ah. You're surprised? They were out, though. The yeah, idiots. Well, you know, they're, they're really out. Can we pop that up? We had the Democratic Party chair vote. Uh, Sarah Thomas Netty Dog. Yeah. LGT. Uh, right here. I have a, <laughs> I have a Sarah Thomas. Uh, I mean, to Nettie be fair, Dog. she should have voted for both as a Democratic Party chair, right? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we have her comment uh, right on there. Yeah. And. A lot of people also uh, who didn't take the poll writing in uh, individual names, and so we could <laughs> probably count that too. Yeah. But this is no, no, in, in any way uh, an scientific, official right, scientific yeah, poll. And some people pointed that out in the comments too. But so. you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. I did. I saw there was a comment where someone had put like, oh, this is uh, anybody can create an account. Well, you know what? We're having fun with it. Yeah, and we're just asking, you know, the relevant question of, of the day and having people weigh in. I wanted to share some of those responses with you. Uh, tried to parse out uh, all of the really spirited responses we got. Uh, Lisa writing, uh, Lou has done a fantastic job with COVID considering how much we just don't know how it behaves. I think she should surround herself with more female advisors, but that's just my opinion. Uh, someone commenting uh, in agreement with Lisa saying that the governor should be uh, surrounded with competent people and no paid off people. Uh, wanted to share uh, other comments here. George commenting on our Facebook page, why everybody thinks about next governor, let's get together and fight this pandemic first. Uh, that view, Bobby commenting that she supports uh, Congressman St. Nicholas, don't matter what anyone says, I'm supporting him, no ands, ifs, or buts. That's uh, Guam politics for you. 
And then uh, Frank commenting, no unity along party lines, no benefit for Guam. They both have eye problems and fail to see the impact of their decisions for our island. Frank commenting that spiritedly. That's Sharing very clever. Other comments here? Uh, someone chanting four more years for the current administration? Well, that, that's not just someone. Can you scroll about, okay, that's uh, Derek Munya Kanata saying four more years, four more years. Yeah, yeah. As, as, <laughs> yeah. We as we shared <laughs> not, exa not exactly like a random voter. Yeah, a rando, random order. right, yeah. And uh, as, as we, you also mentioned at the top of the link uh, this morning, there are Thomas and the dog also weighing <laughs> all in. in all in, all in, all in. You think they get it? You think they get it, Dirk? <laughs> And so that's our, our, our daily question for yesterday. And today we're actually, every Friday, we ask our viewers for their questions. Nice. And actually we posted uh, viewer questions this week. So please send in your question if you have a question you want to see your fellow neighbors weigh in on. And uh, we'll be sure to ask it uh, on our on our newscast right. and uh, okay. here on the link. Right. Well, I also, before we let you go, I mm. just wanted to say uh, great job uh, on the GMH story yesterday or last night. And... I look forward to the rest of the series. Right, yeah, yeah. so uh, Chris uh, and I uh, got a chance to go behind the front line. That's also the name of the series. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got, uh, you know, uh, such a such a behind the scenes look, I think that uh, most people haven't seen yet, unless, of course, unfortunately, you, you were had in there. to be a patient there. Right. Yeah. And uh, some really moving uh, words from the front liners there who Chris, you saw it. It was on their face. You know, they had the marks on their face f from the mask that they've been wearing for almost two years, and and it w it was difficult to hear, but something that we had to hear and see. And so we're going to share more of that in the next few days. Right. I was very uh, humbling and honored to tag along with you, uh, Tomas. What was your main takeaway from that tour yesterday? That, similar to how... Uh, and Pobetsky reminds us uh, we're still in a pandemic. And I think when I went in yesterday, as a person who falls into the category of the infections of 18 to 29 year old tomorrow. Yeah, really, you guys are the ones spreading it, it's a shame. I, I really do want to uh, ask my peers to also be reminded of just how uh, deep we are still in this pandemic. Yeah, what's you guys' problem? Your generation, J18 to 39. I'll let, I you, don't know. Mean to, I I'll don't let you know we're gathering tonight. <laughs> 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 well, <coughs> and you know, I mean, you know, we can make jokes about that and all, yeah. and uh, but it was just uh, to 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 be to be to go through this pandemic um, isolated at home, just coming to work, and uh, you know, taking this as a community, right? That's what uh, Dr. Anna was saying. Um, it was something else to be in really the epicenter, right, of what of what is going on. Man. And, uh, yeah. When we hit uh, the... Uh, a lot there right. and, uh, You're right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and uh, we also... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's any better news, but in uh, Pacific Matters next Monday, uh, we're... <laughs> We're also covering some uh, some important topics. I'm yeah. not sure if we have the. Uh, we do. The I'm going to go ahead and play this. But, uh, uh, yeah. If you could, Tomas, just a little bit about uh, before we play the clip. Yeah. So Pacific uh, Matters. So as we know, uh, it's or some people might not know, uh, it, it's nationally uh, LGBTQ History Month, and uh, wanted to bring in one of Guam's very own legendary icons, events, Chris Ostimo, who has done some amazing work around HIV and AIDS, and is uh, holding a high level position in the San Francisco. In, si in the city of San Francisco. And so in this conversation, we talk about it. And I think one thing that I didn't expect to get out of this conversation with Vince is that he lived through the HIV outbreak. Oh, wow. And when he saw COVID come around, he said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And his dad, uh, unfortunately, as he shared, passed away in September due to a COVID-19 mm. related fatality. Um, and so for someone like Vince, who has seen a lot of his friends pass in the outbreak in the 80s, uh, to live to today uh, and see another wave take out some loved ones is uh, is really imp empowering and uh, we empowering to hear how he's uh, uh, you know use that to make it his mission to to educate more people and so this clip is a bit of our conversation uh, of everything we've covered. You know one thing, Vince, that I, I've seen you uh, repeat a few times in your interviews is a. Uh, uh, your take on the on the saying when life gives you lemons make lemonade and and you say <laughs> I've made some serious lemonade I, I wanted to ask you about that and 
Um, I guess uh, as a follow-up to, to that statement too, um, there's still a lot, of, a lot of stigma around the issues that queer and trans communities face. So what would your message be to those of us here in the Pacific who are also working through some of uh, learning the history and addressing those, those systemic issues? We know interestingly um, in the Pacific Island cultures, um, there are a lot of words for being trans and they're very respectful. It's unfortunate that the stigma that has been introduced around the, um, these communities was brought in by outsiders. Because if you look, go back and look to our histories, you know, in Hawaii and places, there are places where these um, trans who are really looked on in res with respect. And um, my piece around this is I started this new thing, is that um, I long for the day when um, my human rights don't depend on who's in office, that I don't, we don't have to do trainings, we have to teach people how they need to treat each other. And that a day when everybody can identify as either non-binary or gender non-conforming. And people laugh when I say that because it's like, oh, that's impossible. But you know, we are trying to get, we are trying to teach people to accept themselves and we need to accept them. Sometimes I feel that um, what's happening with younger people today with some of the older activists of my generation is that we do to them what the heterosexual community did to us. And people's like, oh, please explain. I'm like, I don't have the time. How much time do you have? Um, but it's, you know, it, it, it does. And so, you know, I, in addition to my work, working with older people with HIV and long-term survivors of HIV AIDS epidemic, I make it a point to work with young people because they are our hope for the future. So anyone here knows there with Vince Chrysostomo, who you know points to the the future of it all, and uh, wanted to also tease a little bit about the uh, other story that we covered in Pacific Matters on Monday, uh, which is with Tavisa Malu, who's doing some great national work, has sat, sat with President Biden and uh, Kamala Harris to advocate for Pacific Islanders, and I think it was interesting at uh, with the interview with Ann, uh, Dr. Ann this morning. Uh, who pointed out that the census is really important in terms uh, of giving us a better understanding of this pandemic and the data. And one thing that Tavai Samalu uh, mentions is that the American Community Survey is not going to be reported in the same way because, you know, as uh, Jason also knows, when it comes to surveys, this survey uh, has a non-response bias, which means less people uh, responded to it, as we can expect because of the pandemic. And as a result of that, that means that the uh, census is probably not going to give an accurate snapshot and then also as a result not give us uh Are you, you know, okay? enough uh, <laughs> enough uh mm -hmm. enough data for mm -hmm. us to understand better things and if you're if you're watching on tv right now and wondering why my eyes are uh watering up it's not it's because okay, uh well. it's not because of uh any of the stories really it's because of something jason just gave me here <laughs> 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 and uh i didn't expect it to have such a snapshot into my eyes it's, so. a, yeah. it's a cop job yeah <laughs> so it's so Jason, Jason just, I should have told you, like when you, you know, actually let it, let it dissolve, I, keep your mouth yeah. closed. Jason I, gave I Tomas I, like I three fisherman friends. I didn't think it would. Uh, I, I thought that <laughs> talking about the GMH would make me cry, yeah. but it was Jason's like, cough drops. So. Well, we can start over and talk about GMH now since <laughs> no. we're rolling. Okay, we're good. Thanks, Tomas. Thanks, Tomas. There you go, Tomas Maglotnia, doing a lot of great things from behind the front line to Pacific Matters to the Daily Question. It's nine oh five. It's Friday. Let's take a break, and then, guys, we're going to go on jail next with Major Anton Ogden. Plus, we're going to give away some pizza. 637-0094. Get your dialing fingers ready. We're giving away a gift certificate to CPK. Coming up right here on the